English words used in the Italian language badly. That's our topic for today. Via. Ciao a tutti. Welcome to my channel. And today we're talking about, as you heard in the intro, English words that are used in the Italian language. And this is a video that I've been wanting to make for quite a while. I've been in this country for 11 years and I've heard more than my fair share of English being butchered, so to speak. If we're just meeting for the first time, once again, welcome to my channel. And here I talk about everything Italy. Uh, more specifically, I have done videos which give practical advice if you're coming here on vacation. And in the recent months, I've done, I've done videos that, which are more culturally based, like today. So in essence, my channel is in constant flux. So keep watching for new types of videos. Now, to be fair, I don't want to give off the wrong message and make everybody think that the Italians are incompetent, that, that they can't speak English, that they don't know how to use the words correctly. But the words that I have today are ones that, in fact, are not used correctly, or they're just not how I would use them. What causes these inaccuracies is not exactly clear. My, my hunch is that uh, whoever the trendsetter is, this is probably somebody or a group of people who are trying to Italianize the English words, and you have a mixture between... Um, a lack of understanding of our culture, and an Italianized version of an English word. I mention the word culture because, in my opinion, language and culture are directly connected. I believe that a language derives from a culture, and when you don't fully understand the other person's culture, then I think that this leaves room for uh, misunderstandings and misuses of words. All right, so let's get into our six words. Now, the first one applies to the situation that we find ourselves in all across the planet, to be honest. More and more people are working from home, and that's just it, working from home. We would say that somebody is doing this, or that they are working remotely, or they are remote working. The Italians don't say it that way. According to them, what we say is smart working. And the first time I heard that, I thought, well, it makes sense, but that's just not, uh, that's just not a phrase that I would use naturally, or I wouldn't associate this with working from home. This one, I believe, is a direct translation from Italian, because in Italian, they would say, lavoro agile. And so I think that, uh, you know, whoever came up with this term and introduced it to the mainstream, that this was the result. How do I feel about that? Um, I'll be honest, I don't like it. You know, if you want to use the English word, make sure you use the correct term. Next on our list, we have the word box or books, as they pronounce it. You might think, how could you possibly screw this word up? I'm not saying that their use is correct or incorrect, but again, it's just not the way that I'm used to using it. The Italians, however, take it to mean uh, a garage. And the first time I heard of this concept, I thought to myself, not quite knowing fully how they use it, I thought, how in God's name can you put a car into a, gi into a gigantic cardboard box? What moron would actually uh, sell a gigantic cardboard box for, for 200 euros a month or whatever? <laughs> but I guess that was a bit of ignorance on my part. The word box actually drips over into our third choice, and this one pertains to sports. I believe box, spelled with an E at the end of it, uh, they take it to mean boxing. Actually, I've just done some fact-checking in the dictionary, and when you spell box with an E at the end of it, that is in fact the French way to say boxing. Although I have had students who think that box is how we say boxing in English. But anyway, number three is kind of a two-parter, and there are two sports which are just not said correctly here. And those are basketball and volley, or as they said, basket volley. Fortunately, these are two sports that I don't practice, follow, or even really care about, so uh, it doesn't affect me that much. But the fact that, that they're still mispronouncing something in my language, yeah, it does irritate me a bit. This next part is for my small but loyal subscriber base. Uh, those of you who watch all my videos, I appreciate it very much. Do you know what my favorite sport actually is? I have two of them actually, but which one do I like most of all? Did you get it? It is in fact hockey and baseball is a close second. If you guess correctly, leave me a comment below. I, I'd be curious to know. Seriously though, I would really like to know why they say basket and volley. Where did it start? Why did it start? I mean, I don't know. On that note, the Italian word for soccer is calcio. Now imagine if I went around saying calcio. Well, they wouldn't like that, would they? With that said, I want equal time. <laughs> for the fourth one, let me ask you a question. What general term would you use if we're talking about Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, these kind of things? 
If you're a native English speaker, you'd probably say social media. But even here, the Italians have their own magical word for it. The Italians call them e social. Now, the word e is in fact spelled with an i. And in Italian, this is an article, and it's the plural form of the article. Because in Italian, you can pluralize uh, the articles. But still, if you were to try to translate this word, you'd probably come up with the socials. Yeah, that just sounds a bit off, really. Uh, I, I don't understand why the Italians can say uh, social media or media, um, because media is, in fact, a word in Italian. This next one is simply just an incorrect use of the word, and I think it comes from a lack of understanding of culture, you know, how we use the word in our daily lives. And the word is shampoo. You might be thinking, how can you possibly screw up this word, shampoo? They do. Let me explain how. Whenever an Italian has to wash their hair, they say, Devo fare uno shampoo, which means I have to do a shampoo. As you can see in English, that just doesn't sound quite right, or that's at least not how I would say it naturally. I've had this discussion with my wife, and I tell her that in English, all you have to say is I have to wash my hair. Because if somebody in the United States says I have to wash my hair, there's no doubt in my mind that they're, that they're going to use some form of shampoo. I mean, it's just, it just goes without saying. This last one is an article of clothing that I wouldn't be caught dead wearing. Uh, it's just, let's just say it's too, too Italian for my taste. And the word is slip. Uno slip in Italian, more or less. In essence, it's like Speedos, but in underwear form. And I've never worn one in my life. And I don't know, it's just not for me. I mean, don't your legs chafe when you wear it? I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure we have it in the United States. But my hunch is that it's just not something that most American males wear. Um, if you say slip in the United States, not as a verb form, but if you say it as a noun, then for us, it's kind of like um, a woman's article of clothing. I'm no fashion uh, expert, really, but if you do a simple Google search, then the first thing you will see, uh, if you put slip clothing, then you will see something for women. Bonus one, something just came to mind. And this next one is something that they don't really say incorrectly, but they certainly write it um, in the wrong way. Whenever you go to a store and you want to pay for it, you'll see a sign up above, very often in both languages, uh, casa, which in English we would say cash register, but for some reason they think that casa means cash. Well, no, that's, that's not the same thing, because cash in Italian is contanti. So, I mean, it's not, a, it's not a huge mistake, really, but still not correct. Now, just to be fair, I have seen the reversal. There are Italian words which are used incorrectly in English. This isn't the topic of today's video, but let's talk about it anyway. Who cares? One particular example comes to mind, and this was the first time that my wife came to the United States. At the time, she was my girlfriend. And we took her to Boston. And in Boston, you have the famous Quincy Market, which is a huge food gallery. You've got multiple choices from different um, cultures, if you will. And at one point, we saw the Italian flag. I thought, wow, this should be interesting. I have the real McCoy here, and she can judge Italian things in the United States. Let's see what happens. So we get closer, and we see a sign that says, Pastaria. My wife was horrified. She says, no, that's just not a word that we use in Italian. <laughs> and she was offended, rightly so. We took a look at the food in, in, the, in the display there, the pre-made pasta. In closing, I just want to say that I'm not brutally criticizing the Italians. I'm not saying they're this. I'm not saying they're that. But I do wish that they would check these words before they introduce them into the mainstream. I mean, I understand making mistakes, really. I teach a language. I speak a second language. And so... You know, we learn by our mistakes, but honestly, there's some, I think that there's mistakes that we can avoid. Okay, so that's going to do it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure you hit the like button, because when you do that, it makes the YouTube algorithm very happy, and my small channel can continue to grow. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button, because my channel is all about Italy, and you never know what kind of video I'm going to make on a week-to-week -week basis, so keep watching. Grazie mille per l'attenzione, ci vediamo la prossima. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.